Hold on tight, tight for, the for the next hour. hour. You're, entering You're entering into a place, a zone called the alternative to the alternative media. It's a place, a special place, where even truth seekers fear to tread. All right, people, let's move like we've got a purpose. Affirmative. Okay, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the greatest show on earth. Greg Anthony here, the investigative journal. This show is for all people of races, colors, and creeds. It does not matter. However, if you're politically correct in everything you say, and you feel like you have the right to determine what sex you are the day you wake up, don't listen. The show's not for you. Because this show is going to talk about three things today. One, we're going to go into Washington, D.C., not to talk about the victory by the Washington Nationals winning the first World Series. I'd rather spend the hour doing that, to be honest with you. But we got a country to save, don't we? We're here to save America, one person at a time. And the reason we're going to do it is because we get to the bottom of the truth. We're called the alternative to the alternative media. The hell with the alternative media and Alex Jones and all those people. The hell with CNN and Fox and all those people. And as the layers start to be pulled away from this veil of secrecy, we are the ones who are getting to the bottom of the whole story. And it's a real simple story. I'm going to talk a little bit about the whole Washington circus and this impeachment inquiry that's going on in Washington. What a joke. Then I want to talk why the papacy and the Jesuits are America's biggest enemy. That should take up most of our show. And if I have time, I want to talk about once upon a time in America, there was a great freedom fighter. It wasn't Slatch Grobnik. Well, he's one of them. I talk about him in another segment of my show, in another chapter of how we are going to defeat the Jesuits one person at a time. Yes, we can do it. But secondly, this is once upon a time in America, there was a freedom fighter who decided to take on the Vatican. This is not a fictitious story, but I know who he is, and I followed his story from the very beginning. And let me tell you, when I tell you this story next week, you're just going to it's going to knock your socks off because we're going to go all the way back to China. Yes, that's how this guy figured it out. And the reason he did is he said, you know, I got to get to the bottom what happened in history. And he was thinking about it and said, you know, the reason we're in this mess is because they've rewritten history. Boy, if I could just go back. All those shows I saw in Hollywood about time machines and all these things. If I could go back. For a purpose, not to just go back and get slaughtered by people in the 16th century or die from the plague, but with a purpose in mind. It had a purpose to really get to the bottom of the truth so I could come back. I am going to take, he said, my video machine with me, and that's his cell phone, and I'm going to record what happened back in the 1600s. So he said, that's impossible. This story is amazing when you want to get to the bottom of it, and I'm going to tell you the whole damn thing. He goes to China because he had heard that there was a man in China that actually knew how to go back and forth in time by the snap of a finger. And he figured since the Chinese have stolen all of our intellectual property and have really become a world power on the backs of America because we have a bunch of traitors in our country and who sold everything away to them to one day take over us. He figured he'd go to China and at least steal this idea. So he goes there to China and he figures out by this Chinese brilliant genius. You know how we always think Asians are so smart. Well, this one really was. And is it really true that all Asians are smart and all Polish people are dumb? I mean, that's the way we think about it, right? Huh. Well, what about Copernicus? Uh, what about Chopin? And what about Andrew Yang? Okay, he's smart. I'm going to look for a real dumb Chinese man, just to make my point. But anyway, I'm sure I can find some. Or I can go down to... Um, I can lump them all together. I go to Koreatown or something in L.A. 
Yeah. Why not? Chinese people always like to lump every white person together, right? He's white. Well, I'm a white, but I'm Polish. He's white, but he's Italian. That doesn't seem to matter anymore. What matters is that all white people seem to have the privilege in America, according to the minorities. But you know who really has the, the, the best of the best? Are the minorities. I want to be a minority. You get everything free now. And then you get everybody feeling sorry for you. But, anyway, so he, go, he figures he's going to go to China and steal something from them. And he sure did. Because he figured out how to go back and forth in time. Not like you see in all these time machine movies. But you're going to find a fascinating story. Because he's actually come back with video. of What it was like to live in the 16th century. He went to the Jesuit reductions to prove that they, you know, that they created communism. All right, so that's sure. I don't even have a title for it, but it's the greatest American freedom freedom fighter, next to Slats Grobnik. I'm really tracing two. And some days I go in, into his story, and some days I'm going to get into this Chinese story. But it all has one goal, and that is to bring to the forefront the importance of how I believe that the papacy and the Jesuits are the biggest enemy America faces. And it isn't just those with a collar on, with the black collar. It's all of the people they have trained. Yes. And uh, it was even George Washington. And you know something? I was reading something very interesting about him. And uh, I believe that Washington was basically a Jesuit shill. Yeah. Because I believe many founding fathers were Jesuit priests who never got the credit of being our founding fathers. Why do they call them fathers anyway? Founding fathers. We call priests fathers. When I grew up in Catholic school, Father Mulcahy, please, can I go to the back of the room? I cannot be sleeping in the front of the room during your religion class. <laughs> so finally, he tapped me on the shoulder and said, Greg, would you go to the back? Because you're falling asleep right in the front row and everybody that passes my room thinks it's not interesting. So I accommodated Father Mulcahy and went to the back. But anyway, let's get to... i got to knock these three subjects off today. Uh, at least two of them. And one is this whole impeachment inquiry going on in Washington. And it's just a mess when you start thinking about it. Now, I'm neither a uh, Trump follower or I'm neither a Democratic follower... In fact, I never voted in my life, and that's my constitutional right. And I always said, why vote for us in a, in a scam election anyway? When they already have selected who they want as president, it becomes crazy. Now, listen, I wasn't always like that. Not always like that. No, not at all. Not at all. In fact, when I was younger, the reason I didn't vote was because I was playing football and baseball all the time. Yeah. All right, so I can't take credit for knowing that it was a scam when I was younger. And then as I got older, like I said, I became a journalist, and I didn't think I should vote because I was supposed to be neutral, right? And then as I learned about the Vatican Jesuits when I lived in Rome, I decided, hey, I was doing the right thing. And I never stepped in a, in a voting booth. I will get struck by lightning if I go into one. I refuse to go into one. But anyway, impeachment. What is going on in Washington? We have to look at it from a picture that's a bit broader than you get in the news media. Now, if you're a Trump follower, you're going to be adamantly against what the Democrats are doing. And if you're a Democrat, you can't wait till they get the scoundrel out of there, right? For No, they don't care what the reason is. But there are America's lined up about 50-50 on the whole thing about whether they like Trump or don't like Trump. And so what's happening is that they're using what's called the Hegelian dialectic. And that means that the people at the top, like Trump and like Adam Schiff and all these people on the Democratic side, Clinton, etc., etc., are all bought and paid for by the Jesuits. And their role is to constantly play the Hegelian dialectic, which means that there must be two opposing forces fighting against each other tooth and nail, and they rub up against each other so hard this becomes chaotic like it is in Washington, 
And pretty soon, they get their synthesis of really what they want. In this case, it's very simple. The Democrats want globalism, open borders, etc. Socialism. That's what it is. The Republicans and Trump want America first. They want America as it was, as it used to be. A free, independent, well, it wasn't always free and independent, but the better, better, you know, better slice of bread than most, uh, if you put the whole loaf of the world together, a better slice of bread than most. And they wanted to make America strong. They believe in American values, Christianity, etc. And they believe in closed borders and national sovereignty, anti-globalists. So, how do you get to globalism? Now, realizing the Jesuits in the Vatican want globalism, and they control Washington, D.C., then that has to be the outcome. But the only way they can get there is by bringing this whole issue to the forefront, seeing who's on what side and who's on the other, rubbing those two together in a battle, whether it becomes a civil war or not. And in the end, they're going to get what they want, and that is globalism, slavery. And they're going to couch it in terms of a beautiful world it's going to be that we can all live together. And then they're going to take away your guns. They're going to take away your car. They're going to take away your land. They're going to take away whatever free speech is left. And it's going to become worse than Venezuela. However, Today, there are a lot of millennials, youngsters, who have no idea what the hell's going on in the world, telling us they want socialism, but they want American socialism. Now, you tell me what's the difference between that and Venezuelan socialism, between Cuban socialism, between the Paraguay reductions in the 1600s. Most of them don't even know what the hell that is. And there's really nothing. And it will lead to the same outcome. But the elite, the few people at the top, will have totalitarian, total control. And that's where we're going. And to get to that point, we're at a stage now where they got to play this whole game they're doing in Washington, i.e. the election of Donald Trump, who is one of their, basically, let's use the term that I've used before that I've gotten from Eric Phelps, who wrote Vatican Assassins, a Jesuit coagitator, or coagitor. A Jesuit shill is what I prefer to use, because that's what he is. However, he has so many layers away from what they believe. Really, how can you say that? Well, because a Jesuit can believe anything. And they do. They have Jesuits thinking America should be, or talking that America should be first. They have Jesuits who want complete globalism and socialism. Now, how can that be? Well, it be because they've done it in every, if you look back in history, they've done it time and time again. Even if you look at a religious issue, which most people don't want to anymore, and that brings up an interesting subject, because there's a recent Pew, uh, Pew Research poll done. 20 minutes, or 20 minutes, I mean 20, 30 years ago, 90% of Americans, or back in the 60s, said they were Christian. Now it's down to 65%. And guess what? It is going to constantly get lower and lower and lower. Okay, so enough with the voting. I had a little glitch, and you had a little bit of dead air there, so I apologize. But anyway, let me get back to the impeachment uh, idea here. And basically, what they're really doing is trying to impeach this president. Really hasn't done any impeachable offenses. Uh, when you looked at the impeachment laws, high crimes and misdemeanors, but the Congress can uh, do whatever they like, and that's exactly what's going on. But in the meantime, nothing gets done. And the whole thing in the end is going to be globalism. So, I mean, why don't we just cut to the chase and get there? But anyway, Trump. Trump has been put in office to create this chaos from the side of the right wing, of course. 
He's not an extremist, but he says things and does things that incite liberals to, to, to almost violence, and in some cases violence. And that is orchestrated. So it's an orchestrated effort by the Jesuit Vatican-led New World Order to rip this country in two. And in the process, show the American people there is no constitution left. And, basically, it's a big, big charade, a big, big theatrical performance being done. And <laughs> you American people are buying right into it if you choose a side, if you choose to be either a Democrat or Republican. So anyway, enough of that. We could go on forever and ever and ever and talk about this. Uh, but just tune in to Fox or to CNN, and you'll get your fill of it there. But hopefully you'll look at it through, not through rose-colored glasses, but through the glasses of the investigative journal who are telling you the truth, that it's nothing but a charade and basically a Hegelian dialectic trick to get to their synthesis, their end. Globalism, one world order, one world religion. And that's a segue into the second half of my show here in the first half hour, what I want to talk about. And that is the biggest threat to America, in my estimation, isn't a foreign power, isn't someone coming in here like the Chinese or the North Koreans together with the Chinese or the Russians and the Chinese together with the North Koreans to basically take over America. America will be taken over from within. And the instigators behind it always have been the papacy and the Jesuit order. And we could go back to Washington, that's President Washington, and show his connections to Catholicism, to the Vatican, when it wasn't even, you know, kosher to do that here in the country, because back then, Protestants realized if you bring Rome here, you've got problems because of what they did in Europe. So anyway, let's talk about this a bit. So the United States, like I said, is not going to be taken over by a foreign power. The U.S. is infiltrated, will be infiltrated, and taken from within. Let me give you a quote from Abraham Lincoln, the 16th president of the United States. At what point shall we expect the approach of danger, he says? By what means shall we fortify against it? Shall we expect some transatlantic military giant to step over the ocean and crush us at a blow? Never. All the armies of Europe, Asia, and Africa combined, with all the treasure of the earth in the military chest, with a Napoleon Bonaparte for a commander, could not force take a drink from the Ohio, or make a track on the Blue Ridge in a trial of a thousand years. At what point, then, is the approach of danger to be expected? I answer, he said, if it ever uh, reached that point, it must spring up amongst us. It cannot come from abroad. If destruction be our lot, we must ourselves be its author and finisher. As a nation of free men, we must live through all time or die by suicide. Now, he gave this speech January 27, 1838, in Springfield, Illinois. Now, we have discussed many times in this show the importance of a book called Fifty Years in the Church of Rome by Charles Chiniqui. I hope you've got a chance at least to look at some of the major portions of it. But if you haven't, it's a book that you should get, and you can get it. They have it free at a one place I found. It's called www, I hope it's still there, biblebelievers.com slash forward slash slash chiniqui, spelled C-H-I-N-I-Q-U-Y forward slash. So let me take a few excerpts from that book to prove my point. Now, Charles Chiniqui to uh, really not get into the whole story, was a very close friend of Lincoln. Lincoln was his lawyer prior to Lincoln becoming president and got him off on a fake ra uh, rape charge because of his outspokenness against the Vatican and the Catholic Church and the Jesuits, who framed him for rape. Lincoln came to his rescue, and they became friends 
the rest of their lives. And he was instrumental in teaching Lincoln a lot about what the papacy was up to back then. Now, the first question I have to ask you, do you think it's changed since the time of Lincoln and now? Do you think that the Vatican has changed its colors? Do you think that what I'm saying here is old hat, is only in the past? No, I don't think so. I'll leave that up to you. But Charles Chinakwe was a priest who exposed the inner goals and objectives of the papacy in that book I mentioned, 50 Years in the Church of Rome. And the book can be read, like I said, at that BibleBelievers.com website. And for many decades, uh, the papacy had been laying plans. They have been trying to take over the United States since they got into the United States. And the goal of the papacy has always been, as stated in Chinakwe's book, to take this country over from within. And here's something he, uh, here's a few quotes from that book. He uh, said, we are determined. And uh, he took this quote from the church itself. He said, we are determined to take possession of the United States and rule them, but we cannot do that without acting secretly and with utmost wisdom. If our plans become known, they will be surely defeated. Now, how sad will their awakening be when with our outnumbered numbering votes we will turn them forever from every, every position of honor, power, and profit? What will those hypothetical and godless sons and daughters of the fanatical pilgrim fathers say when not a single judge, not a single teacher, not a single policeman will be elected if he not be a devoted Roman Catholic? What will those so-called giants think of their matchless shrewdness and ability when not a single senator or member of Congress will be chosen if he not be submitted to our Holy Father in, the, in Rome? What a sad figure those Protestant Yankees will cut when we will not only elect the president, but fill and command the armies, man the navies, and hold the keys of the public treasury. Then, then yes, then we will rule the United States and lay them at the feet of the vicar of Christ, the Pope, and he may put an end to their godless system of education and sweep away those impious laws of liberty of conscience, which are an insult to God and man. The American people must be very blind indeed if they do not see that if they do nothing to prevent it, the day is very near when the Jesuits will rule their country from the magnificent White House at Washington to the humblest civil and military department of this vast republic. Wow. So, you, you know, Chinakwe is telling us exactly years ago, hundreds of years ago, what really is going on today. And as the years passed, as the generations died off, the Vatican grew stronger in this country. And the Jesuits, through uh, their deceitful ways, have basically taken over Congress, taken over the White House, taken over the CIA, taken over most every aspect of our government, and have divided it into two segments, smartly and, and strategically, and that is globalists, or as we call it, the deep state, and those who want to preserve American freedoms. And in that battle, I am assuring you, the outcome will be globalism, socialism, and a different America. And I don't know how many years from now that'll take place, but I can't see at this point it ever being stopped. It's, it's, uh, it's amazing when you see something like this go on. And I'll tell you what, it could be 10 years from now, it could be 100, but we know it's going to take place. Back in three minutes on the Investigative Journal. The book of Revelation says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone 
absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Reality News app. Get it now. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the Third Temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn. The Jewish people are eager. Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the Third Temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a reestablished Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using scripture to interpret scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. The following, the following program, program is legally dangerous, dangerous and off-limits limits by the by Supreme, Supreme Jesuit, Jesuit command. command, but stand tall, people. people. Listen, listen up, 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 and you, you may, may just, just learn, learn something. something. Oh, dear Lord Jesus, this ain't happening, man. This can't be happening, man. This ain't happening. Okay, we're back for the second half hour. The papacy as the deadly enemy of America. Who would have thunk it, right? Who would have thought that? But you know something? The more you look into the Jesuit Vatican-led New World Order, you come away with the idea that, you know, hey, Greg's right on this one, you know? And let me tell you something. It's such a hidden plan that it's so well-crafted that let me tell you something. Unless you really do your homework, you're going to have trouble understanding it. Now, there used to be a little book I'd carry around with me in my back pocket called The Secret Terrorists. And the book uh, is a little handbook I think everybody should read when they start researching this idea that we present on this show. And I thought I'd go back to that book and uh, highlight some of its important parts from uh, the chapter says that says we will lose our Constitution. Now, I studied the Constitution, took a constitutional law class and then some in, the, uh, in law school. And let me tell you something, it's only as good as those who adhere to it, because it can be ripped apart, as our President George Bush said. And uh, he <laughs> not many people in Washington adhere to it, let's put it that way. Anyway, so let's look at the papacy and what uh, the secret terrorists had to say. And I, I see you can still get the book. Uh, look it up, Bill Hughes, Secret Terrorists. But let me refer to it, because sometimes we forget the most important things, the generalities, the things that uh, we should be looking at, and then doing our homework regarding whether you adhere to this or not, or believe that there's even any reason to think it's at all credible. But anyway, let's see what he has to say. He says, you know, the papacy, really is the most deadly enemy the United States will ever have to face, using the utmost secrecy to conceal their plans. Now, the papacy, through her many facades of, uh, you know, many secret ideas and using religion as a front, has for many decades been infiltrating the U.S. 
in all its levels of government. So what does that mean? It means a lot of the people in government adhere to fascism, adhere to globalism, and it doesn't matter what the hell they tell you. As a result, the United States will soon lose its constitution and become a tyrannical persecuting power. As you read the following, keep in mind that they have said it is their goal to take over the United States and trash the Constitution. It's not something that we're making up. They've told us this. The American Constitution is thoroughly detested by the papacy, if you want to know the truth, because the freedom safeguards it contains make it virtually, folks, impossible for the papacy to take over the United States as long as it is in force. Here from uh, Chiniqui's book, again, he says, Rome is, a constant, is in a constant conspiracy against the rights and liberties of man all over the world, but she is particularly so in the United States. Long before Chiniqui was ordained, or he says, I was ordained as a priest, I knew that my church was the most implacable enemy of this republic. My professors of philosophy, history, and theology had been unanimous in telling me that the principles and laws of the Church of Rome were absolutely antagonistic to the laws and principles that are the foundation stones of the Constitution of the United States. First, the most sacred principle of the United States Constitution is the equality of every citizen before the law. But the fundamental principle of the Church of Rome is the denial of that equality. Second, liberty of conscience is proclaimed by the United States a most sacred principle which every citizen must uphold. But liberty of conscience is declared by all popes and councils of Rome a most godless, unholy, and diabolical thing which every good Catholic must abhor and destroy at any cost. Third, the American Constitution assures the absolute independence of the civil from the ecclesiastical or church power, i.e. separation of church and state. But the Church of Rome declares through all her pontiffs and councils that such independence is an impiety and a revolt against God. Fourth, the American Constitution leaves every man free to serve God according to the dictates of his conscience. But the Church of Rome declares that no man has ever had such a right, and the Pope alone can know and say what man must believe and do. Wow, scary, but true. And when the papacy takes over, there will be bloodshed. The Church of Rome says that she has a right to punish with the confiscation of their goods or the penalty of death. Those who differ, those who differ, in faith from the Pope. You know, America has no, has had no idea of this terrible trouble and persecution that is coming, even to this day. The people of America have forgotten all the cruelties and all this unstrained butchery, the unholy power demonstrated during the Dark Ages when it slaughtered over 150 million Christians because they wanted to worship God according to the Bible. Hitler's Holocaust against the Jews, and may I add the Croatian genocide and the Rwandan genocide and many others. It was a tiny compared to this papal holocaust against Christians during the Dark Ages. And the Jesuit-controlled news media never mentions these atrocities or says simply, it was something of the past. Don't misunderstand this. The Catholic Church is not a Christian religion. Now, you know, I've said this many times on my show, that you have to differentiate between Catholicism and Christianity. And that is a key element before you do anything else. And it is a strange combination, that's Catholicism, and I know it well because I grew up in it, of old pagan religions with a Christian front. Just because they claim to be Christian churches does not make it so. Now, here is a statement from Chiniqui's book again 
That shows the power of these people have already amassed in the United States. The Jesuits of the United States form one of the richest and most powerful corporations the world has ever seen. Can you imagine today? The papacy is by far the wealthiest institution on earth. This comes from, well, let's say, Avril Manhattan's book, The Vatican Billions. And he says this, Jesus, the founder of Christianity, was the poorest of the poor. Roman Catholicism, which claims to be his church, is the richest of the rich. Now, remember Jack Chick, Jack Chick, Chick Publications? And he published a number of books in, a, in comic book form to try to get people to understand this. He said, the Catholic Church is the biggest financial power, wealth accumulator, and property owner in existence. She is the greatest possessor of material riches than any other institution, corporation, bank, giant trust, government, or state of the in the entire globe. Now, if that be true, it under you understand why all these politicians work for them. Now, very few people really know anything. And that's what we do on this show. We try to tell you a little bit about the Jesuits. Because, really... They operate in extreme secrecy. Now, there's a book called The Great Controversy, written by the founder of the Seventh-day Adventists. Now, what, whatever your religious idea here is, and whether you think that Ellen White was a Jesuit show or not, because it isn't uh, unusual for them to put their own into opposing religions, to infiltrate them. And it wouldn't be out of the out of the question to think that they would create the leadership of the Seventh day Adventists. So in the end they could control it. You know, control your enemy. But whatever you think about her, just look at the words and forget about whether she was a Jesuit or not. Now in that book, it says, Throughout Christendom, Protestantism was menaced by formidable foes. The first triumphs of the Reformation passed. Rome summoned new forces, hoping to accomplish its destruction. At this time, the Order of the Jesuits was created, the most cruel, unscrupulous, and powerful of all champions of the popery. Cut off from earthly ties and human interests, dead to the claims of natural affection, reason, and conscience, who, holy silence, they knew no rule, no tie, but that of their order, and no duty but to extend its or the order's power. The gospel of Christ had enabled its adherents to meet danger and endure suffering, undismayed by cold, hunger, toil, and poverty, to uphold the banner of truth in, in the face of the rack, the dungeon, and to the stake to combat these forces. Jesuitism inspired its followers with a fanaticism that enabled them to endure their dangers and to oppose to the power of truth all the weapons of deception. There was no crime too great for them to commit, no deception too base for them to practice, no disguise too difficult for them to assume. Vowed to Perpetual poverty and humility, it was their studied aim to secure wealth and power, to be devoted to the overthrow of Protestantism and the reestablishment of the papal supremacy. When appearing as members of their order, they wore a garb of sanctity, visiting prisons and hospitals, ministering to the sick and poor, professing to have renounced the world and bearing the sacred name of Jesus, who went about doing good but under the blameless exterior to most criminal and deadly purposes were often concealed. It was a fundamental principle of the order that, that the end justifies the means. By this code, lying, theft, perjury, assassination were not only pardonable but commendable when they served the interests of the church. Under various disguises, the Jesuits worked their way into offices of state climbing up to the counselors of kings and shaping the policies of nations. And may I add, they've done this for hundreds of years, even when they first entered China 
in the 1600s. They've done it in America since they came here. And can you imagine how many of our top leaders adhere to the same principles I'm reading to you about? You know, they became servants to act as spies upon their masters. They established colleges for sons and of princes and nobles, and schools for the common people, and the children of Protestant parents were drawn into the observance of popish rites. All the outward pomp and display of the Romish worship was brought to bear to confuse the mind and dazzle and captivate the imagination. And thus the liberty for which the fathers had toiled and bled was betrayed by the sons. The Jesuits rapidly spread themselves over Europe, and wherever they went, there followed a, revi a revival of popery. So why don't you think it's going to happen here? <laughs> okay. Now, today, folks, not only are they entrenched in the Boy, the highest powers of the country, yes. They, they, you know, this is amazing what's going on. And nobody really knows anything about it. That's the amazing thing about it. And when you try to tell people, you're called insane. Now today, the Pope's Jesuits are not only entrenched at the highest levels of all branches and departments of the U.S. government, they are entrenched at the highest levels of virtually all major corporations and industries, including the social media, including Facebook, including Google, what, what have you. Now, the Jesuits are the major stockholders of many of the largest corporations. Years ago, we brought statistics to you, verifying that they own 51% of the stock of Bank of America. The Bank of America started out, what was it, the Bank of uh, San Francisco or the Bank of Italy when it first started out? And because the papacy is so-called church, they pay no one penny, not one penny of taxes because they are so-called church. They're able to operate internationally outside of the laws and legal proceedings everyone else must follow. Now here's a few, just a few, going back a few years, and we added many more to this, of corporations controlled by the Vatican Jesuits and totally support their Jesuits in Congress and the government, American Airlines, TWA, AT&T, it's my phone carrier, Anheuser-Busch, Bell Atlantic, Boeing, Cigna, Coca-Cola, Daimler Chrysler, Exxon, Ford Motor Company, General Electric, HP, Euler Packard, Home Depot, May Company, McDonald's, Motorola, Philip Morris, Price Waterhouse, Rite Aid, RJR, Nabisco, Sony Corporation of America, Texaco, United Parcel Service, Walt Disney, Wells Fargo, and the list goes on. These corporations, these leaders in these corporations give their Jesuit senators and congressmen in both the Democrat and the Republican parties many thousands of dollars for their election campaigns. These senators and congressmen are the most radical and dangerous that this country has ever had. Look what's going on now. You've got the Democratic Party turning into a socialist party. That's planned. They do everything they can to pass laws and regulations prohibited by our Constitution. Laws that are designed to destroy America, not help it. To eliminate freedom, not to, to encourage it. And to convert the United States into nothing but a ruthless tyranny. They lie constantly to deceive the people so the people will go along with the laws and regulations they want to pass. And that's what they're doing on steroids now in Washington when you see this kind of battle between the nationalists and the globalists. Everyone in high positions in the government takes really a solemn oath to uphold and obey the Constitution. But really, nearly all of them ignore it. The president issues executive orders that are totally unconstitutional, and Congress passes law that the Constitution specifically forbids. So really, what good is it? Our God-given Constitution is the reason the United States has become the greatest country in the world. But it is being thoroughly undermined 
today by the Vatican Jesuit-led New World Order. As they work to convert the United States into a ruthless police state in the guise of whatever they're going to call it, socialism, communism, whatever, and the laws and regulations they pass are designed to export the industrial and manufacturing base of the United States to other countries. Let me just take an aside here and say, when I mention that they're here to turn this country into a ruthless police state, or let's say a communistic socialistic state, just look at where it starts. Look at how people now, if you don't adhere to what's called the liberal view, the woke view, basically you are a persona non grata. You basically have no right to think that way. And you, sir, do not have a right to live in America anymore. And that's what they think. That's basically it. So where is the freedom of speech? I just listened to a whole bunch of so-called smart millennials talk about how hate speech must not be protected by the Constitution. Now, they don't know what the hell they're talking about, and they just make a blatant statement like that. Now, what is hate speech is the real key, and what they consider hate speech is anything that goes against their liberal views. That's not hate speech. It's not hate speech to talk about the Vatican in these terms. Do your homework. You know, hate speech has a, has a very specific reason f for disallowing it. And it has to do with provoking or inciting extreme immediate danger. A good example is you can't yell fire. It's not protected by the Constitution in a crowded theater. So really, do your homework before you start spewing off those things. So the Jesuits, folks, okay, they are designed to destroy our energy base by restricting all prospecting fuel production, nuclear power plants. The Jesuits, look at what they're doing now with the Green New Deal and why Trump is doing just the opposite, turning the country into being energy independent. But where's this all leading? It's all leading to their way of doing it. And really, the Green New Deal for take away all our fuel. Uh, the Senate and regulating agencies restrict the private use of land with nonsensical environmental rules and regulations. They pass laws and regulations. What is proper? They're telling you, you can't think for yourself. You have to follow us. That's the liberal view. To be taught in schools so that children will go up extremely ignorant under the banner of being educated. As Mark Twain once said, don't let school stand in the way of your education. And he's right. Your Jesuit education, he should have said. Don't let that school Jesuit education stand in the way of learning. You know, the Jesuits are not recognized by the general populace because of their treachery and secrecy. They tell no one that they are Jesuits. They even belong to other churches, other cultures, and other organizations that they've infiltrated to hide their identities and to control these organizations. These are the millions and millions of the Pope's Jesuits running around without you even knowing it. They are everywhere. Like I used to say, under every rock. They are, are into everything. They are into every organization, control nearly every political organization and government in the world. Because of the Jesuits' extreme secrecy, many of these organizations and governments are totally even unaware that they're being infiltrated and controlled. To e it's easy, though, to identify these Jesuits and their puppets in the United States Congress because they are the ones continually trying to get all kinds of laws passed that require exactly the opposite of what the Constitution says. They continually pass the laws that restrict liberty of the citizens. They continually, this is also on the state and local level, continually pass laws to regulate every aspect of your life. Tell you what to eat, tell you what to drink, tell you how to walk, tell you how to talk, tell you when to smoke, when you can't smoke. They continually pass laws that restrict your freedom of speech, such as the Campaign Finance Reform Act 
Incidentally, they always use names for these laws that will sound good to the American people, but rarely indicate what is in the law. They use every means they can to deceive the people and the country of the country and the world. Now, going way, way back, you know, we I remember doing an, a lot of research on this. We talk about the Patriot Act, and it's really a good example. And I'll just read that because I only have a minute. The Patriot Act is an almost total violation of the Constitution, requiring many of the regulations Nazi Germany and Communist Russia had. When all the requirements of this act are implemented, the citizens of this country will rue the day that they ever allowed such a monstrosity to become law. Okay. The Patriot Act was designed and written prior to 9-11. It was a 300-page document put into law, written primarily by a Jesuit lawyer from Georgetown University named Vin Dim. And because of the hysteria of 9-11, it was put into law. Nobody even read it. And that was that. The idea of it is basically to say to you that all your rights can be taken away in the guise of terrorism. And you see it every day. You see it every day. The rights are dwindling and dwindling and dwindling, and people are allowing it to occur. All right, back tomorrow on the investigative journal. The book of Revelation says, the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased, it has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, Invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188.